natural selection. Evolution is the change in frequency of a trait in a population over time. Specifically, we're talking about microevolution because we're talking about that frequency of a trait. And when we say over time, we mean a long time. Evolution does not happen overnight. It takes a very, very long time. Evolution happens because of this thing called natural selection. Natural selection is the process by which organisms better adapt to their environment, or organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. So if you're better fit for the environment that you're in, then you are going to be better able to survive and reproduce and pass on your genetic information. This theory of natural selection, it was first fully explained by Charles Darwin and is now believed to be the main process that brings about evolution. So when we talk about natural selection, we talk about evolution, we need to know what a niche is. And a niche refers to the way in which an organism fits into a particular ecological community or ecosystem. Okay, sorry, I had to pause for a second. So a niche is just the way that an organism fits into its environment, its ecosystem. Through the processes of natural selection, a niche is the evolutionary result of a species morphological. So let's define morphological. Morphology recurs to an organism's physical structure. So a niche is the evolutionary result of a species' morphological, psychological, and behavioral adaptations to its surroundings. So let's get into the model of natural selection. And I apologize if you can hear the cricket in my little office space. There's a couple things that have to be true for natural selection, and these are kind of things that Charles Darwin has outlined, and these are principles that we have found to be true. So when we're talking about natural selection, if there is no variation in a population, then that population is not going to change. So if every individual has the exact same um, traits, then the population can't change because they're just going to reproduce the exact same things over and over and over. If there is variation in, in a specific trait and there is an environmental selective pressure that interacts with that trait, then the frequency of the variance will change in the population over time. So think about if we have black bunnies and white bunnies. In the wintertime, those white bunnies are going to be better fit to survive in their environment because of the snow. They can blend in and hide from predators. Whereas the black bunnies, they have this environmental selective pressure where they do not blend into the snow. They're going to be selected against and they're probably not going to be able to reproduce as much because they're going to be picked off by predators. The third thing is that the variant that contributes to survival will increase in the population and the other trait is going to decrease. So like I said, in the winter, the white, bunny, the white bunnies, their variant and their, their ability to survive is going to increase in the winter and the black bunnies is going to decrease. We're going to see less black bunnies and more white bunnies. The fourth thing is that those organisms that obtain sufficient energy are better able to reproduce. So again, going back to that bunny situation, a black bunny may need to be spending more energy running away from predators, um, hiding from predators, all of these different things than the white bunny is going to have to do. So they're going to be spending way more energy and they're probably not going to have the time to reproduce because they're running from all those predators. Whereas the white bunnies are saving a lot of energy, they're able to kind of hang out because they hide from the predators better, and they're able to reproduce because they have enough energy to do so. In order for, this is the last thing, in order for the variation to be passed on, it must be inherited. So it can't be the, one of these acquired traits. It has to be able to be passed down. So fur color would be an example of this. It has to be able to be passed down to the offspring, and there has to be some type of variation in 
the possible colors of fur. So really quickly, in generic terms, evolution is any change in the relative frequency of alleles in the gene pool of a population over time. We need to define what gene pool is. So a gene pool consists of all of the alleles of all of the individuals that make up a population. So all of the bunnies, all of their alleles are what is a part of what we call a gene pool. Population genetics is the study of the gene and the allele frequencies within a population. So some people literally do this for their job. They figure out how um, common certain genes and alleles are in different populations, um, specifically talking about like animals. They can figure out what's what potentially could happen to those populations in 5, 10, 20 years based on how the alleles and genes are being selected for or against. So one of the biggest things that you need to know is that natural selection acts on individuals. It selects individuals that are most fit in their environments to survive and reproduce. So think about our bunnies. The white bunnies are selected for, they are going to be able to survive and reproduce better than our black bunnies on an individual basis. Evolution, though, and this change in gene, gene frequency over time, that acts on entire populations. And that takes a very, very long time to happen, that the genes could actually change. So remember, a population is a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area. Now, there are three types of selection. So directional selection is a form of selection in which individuals at one end of this distribution curve have a higher fitness than the individuals in the middle or other end. So the distribution then shifts one direction. Think about the rabbit example that I just told you. The white rabbits would do better than the dark colored rabbits, so the graph would shift to the other way. Not how this picture looks, but you get what I'm saying. So it's gonna shift one way to favor one type of phenotype or physical trait. Then we have stabilizing selection, and that is a form of selection in which individuals near the center of the distribution curve have a higher fitness than individuals at either end. Give me one second. I'm trying to get this cricket to stop and it won't. Okay, so the distribution curve narrows really small. So it gets more um, intense towards the middle instead of the smooth curve that we see here. The final type is disruptive. So disruptive selection is a form of selection in which individuals at either end of the distribution curve have a higher fitness than those that fall near the middle. So this can create two very distinct physical traits. Um, one of the biggest examples of this is um, finches. So their beaks Depending on the type of seeds that are around, the bigger beaks might be better, or the smaller beaks might be better, but the middle sized beaks don't do well with either of those different size seeds. Something of that nature, where one, two different traits are better than the middle trait. So that concludes our note video for today. We will practice with this a little bit in class, do some different um, simulations. And if you have any questions, please come find me. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one.